and praise God. Brother Bob, would you open us up in prayer today? Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for gathering us once again. Thank you for this Mother's Day. And again, we pray you bless all the mothers, uh, mothers in the church. And uh, we are in need of your timely uh, word and, and input for today, Lord. Help David and all of us to, uh, to be in the spirit and just to, to know what, how you're leading us, directing Amen. us. Uh, bless this time together. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Well, just a recap here. Last Wednesday here, we had Brother Ben Ansa on with us and it turned out to be a really great, lively meeting. So that recording is available for Wednesday. Uh, I think the last Sunday, I'm trying to recall, I think it was two Sundays ago, we brought in uh, Brother Alade from Nigeria came in. And uh, I went to Lagos that morning. And praise God, we were able to get back in time to have a meeting here on the home front. So we we're thankful for that. So those recordings are available. Also, we had Rudy uh, Bam on from Australia. And he shared the Wednesday before last. Uh, if you get a chance to listen to the recording of Rudy's message, uh, it's, it's really sobering, fantastic. Uh, it, he shared much of his testimony, how the Lord really brought him through his business days, how he was really on the way to great, great success as far as the world standard was concerned, but how God turned that all around. But in the midst of all of this, he also had a major accident and he almost died in the hospital and how the Lord met him <clears throat> and ministered a word to him that he brought a week ago Wednesday. So if you haven't heard that message, you should go back and listen to that recording. We have had some great meetings this last month. Actually, I think great meetings the whole year. So we're very blessed to have the recording. Amen. 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 And Brother Gary has been the one responsible for the technical aspects of putting these on record and putting them up for all of us to view. And uh, as we've shared before, many follow the recordings. Amen. They maybe don't come on, but they pick a different time that's convenient for them and they do watch the recordings. So that's, that's marvelous. So uh, this morning, we personally, Sandra and I went to Michigan, Oscoda, Michigan, to join John Baines and his family fellowship group. And uh, John was up in Michigan for a close friend of his, a funeral a memorial service yesterday. And I understand that went very, very well. So we went up there to Oscoda this morning, we had a great meeting. Good to see a lot of John's family. So that's kind of it in a recap here, uh, a quick bundle, amen. And we're looking to the Lord, what he has for us today, even now. Praise God. So we trust God's going to guide us today. Uh, a lot of brethren have stepped off. Uh, Russ Blum was going to bring the word today and he had to cancel last minute. Uh, the Walkers said they will not be on today. The Williams will not be on today. So we expected a smaller crowd. But I found that the smaller crowds usually bring the more impact, powerful, anointed meetings. So we're trusting the same today. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to open it up right now. Um, Sister Kaya, do you have a song for us today? Amen. I do. Great. Okay. I do. Yes. It's one of my songs. It's the last song on the CD. And it's a Revelation 21.4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away Behold, I make all things new, and God 
Amen. Praise God, Sister Kaya. Praise, praise the Lord. Okay. Sandra is asking, do you have another song in your heart today? Well, no, but I have a surprise for a maybe Wednesday. Brother okay. Nate Chetik sent me a recording on YouTube of one beautiful song. And it's a challenging song, but I'm working on it. So I'm learning a new song. Great. Excellent. Look forward to Wednesday when you can bring that. That's yes. Great. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Uh, also a bit of news and announcement here. Pat Sweeney, who's normally with us on these calls, uh, he's up in the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area. And his daughter, who has come on in times past, she was on when we started about a year ago on some of these calls, uh, you may remember, remember Jennifer is her name and uh, she's newly married. And so she was expecting. And so she had a baby boy just a day or two ago. I'm not sure when he was born, uh, but we'll pray for Jennifer today. They wanted to bring it naturally, but uh, she was in labor so long, they had to go to a C-section. Uh, so we got the chance to see a little picture of the little baby boy. Uh, his name is Hank Caden. Yes, Hank Caden. Praise God. So we just want to pray for the mother and the boy that they would just be healthy all the way through from this transition time in both of their lives. So, so Pat is up there and he sends his greetings to everyone, but he could not be on today. So amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to open it up for a little bit. Do you have a testimony? Anyone have a testimony? Uh, something burning on their heart they'd like to share? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, Brother Joe. Amen. We're glad to have you on from Nigeria. Yeah, would you like to start us out today? Amen. We heard a marvelous song here by Kaya and some of the announcements for prayer. But uh, how are things in Port Harcourt? Yeah, good afternoon, brethren. Amen. Um, it's always good to share fellowship with you. Amen. Um, I'm always looking forward to this time. Yes. You know, um, the Lord has been good to us in Port Harcourt. Amen. And the word of God has not been scarce also. Yeah. As our every meeting, giving us the bread. Amen. That leads to eternal life. That yes. Amen. Praise God. And the word this morning in fellowship, what did you have? Yeah, praise God. Um, there was something I heard when I when I tuned in. Yeah, you're breaking up quite a bit, Brother Joe. Yeah, we, we talked about the redemption, the redemptive work of Christ. Amen. Yeah. You know, Christ dying for us and redeeming us back to the Father. Amen. Yes. Am I, am I, is it audible? But Question. I'm pretty concerned this network again. It shall not disturb us. We receive victory. Mm. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so I, I heard that Mother's Day. Mother's Day. It is. is. It, I, am I audible? Yeah. 
Uh, you're breaking up a little bit, but we caught that. Yeah, it's Mother's Day in America. We were asking if there's a Mother's Day in Nigeria. Yeah, let me let me try to hook up with um, the other device. Okay. If it should be clear. Yeah. Okay. Great. Praise God. Okay, you are. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. I see you're unmuted, but on our end, we still can't hear you. I know it's difficult coming out of uh, Nigeria to get a good solid connection. Praise God. Okay, brother Joe, maybe we'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, great. As you get, as you're working on things there, uh, Sister Fasola, what was the word this morning in your fellowship there, in in the UK? Oh, sorry. There's a lot of noise here. I've got my sister over. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, what I, you know, what struck me was. Um, that we have to be Holy Spirit led, Amen. that we have to, you know, like we, we want God to direct us and lead us because we were actually praying for Nigeria and, and um, one of, you know, the, um, one of the ladies in our fellowship, she was concerned about like um, the kidnappings that are taking place yes. and how, um, you know, like children or teenagers or students are getting into cars which they think is, is a taxi or, but you know, like, so what we were praying for is that God will cause them to see, Amen. you know, like give them that direction so that they don't get into the cars in the first place that God will, you know, yeah. like stop them from getting into the car. But that th she, she talked about somebody who was um, kidnapped and the kidnappers didn't feel comfortable to have the girl there. So they blindfolded her and they let her go. Uh -huh. but, uh, apparently her sister had been kidnapped and they were praying for, you know, that, that she would be, you know, um, you know, that they would release her, but it was like, just to pray that, you know, like that God will give us all that um, insight so that we don't, you know, we don't take the wrong direction. We don't go in the wrong way and we don't get into cars that we, no. you know, and even the younger people like, you know, that like, let's be Holy Spirit led at all times. That was, that was a key thing that really struck me in fellowship too. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, kidnappings are a real serious situation. Others maybe aren't aware of the dangers, especially in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, down there, uh, where kidnappings have occurred. Uh, Joe and your fellowship, you know, of course, Chima, uh, Chima Anyam's father-in-law was kidnapped at the age of 90 and it was held, I think, captive 17, 18 days before the kidnappers just released him. And we saw a picture that he had celebrated his 96th birthday. And he looked good, chipper, alert, and attentive. And we thank the Lord how God brought him through that dangerous situation where he was in captivity for 17, 18 days. And there's no question that God released him uh, from his captors there. And uh, over time, we've prayed for several that have been kidnapped uh, in that particular area of Nigeria. So several, one sister we remember, Veronica's daughter, was kidnapped for seven days, held captive, and she was delivered unharmed, amen, which was an absolute miracle from God. So our sister Fasola is bringing up a very current a problem that's existed, but very current, still ongoing there in Nigeria, other parts of the countries in the world too, you know, but it's primarily a major emphasis there. We've heard of people just stepping off of a plane coming out of the airport. They thought they were stepping into a taxi and they were kidnapped straight off the airport. So what Sister Fasola is bringing to us is the young people stepping into what they think is a taxi and they could be kidnapped. 
So before we go any further, let's pray. Amen. You brought up a very real need, uh, one that maybe we're not totally familiar with in America, but we certainly have prayed for others, especially in Nigeria, that have fallen into this, this snare, this trap of the enemy. But believe it or not, in America, there are many children, many youngsters that get kidnapped, and uh, they could be finding themselves in foreign lands, foreign countries, never to know liberty again. It's a horrible, frightening, scary thought, but it does happen even in this country right here. So we encourage parents to always know where your children are and that they be attentive to their surroundings. So let us take a moment to pray here. Amen. Father, we lift up, Lord, the needs there in especially Port Harcourt, Nigeria, other areas of Nigeria, yes, other parts of the world, yes, even in this country, uh, we don't often hear of them, but they're not often broadcast either. So Father, we pray God. We've been praying over the years, and Lord, I can't recall one that we have been called to pray with and pray for that have not been delivered. Lord, we just pray, God, that as you lead us by your spirit, direct us by your word in prayer, that those that are taken captive would be delivered. Amen. Father, we think of Brother Joe Ansa on this call right here. Amen. Was kidnapped. And I remember the alarm, the shockwaves that went through our the brethren here in the States to pray for his deliverance. And Lord, we see even today with him being on the call, you deliver him. You set him free. Amen. And he's here to live out his life because you have purpose, a plan, and a destiny for our brother. So, Father, we lift up those children, those youngsters in Port Harcourt, in Nigeria, that, Lord, think they're stepping into a taxi, stepping into another mode of transportation, and it's just an avenue by which they might be held captive. Father, we pray, God, put discernment in your people. Father, it used to be we could go out to the store and come home without even a thought, Today, even in America, we have to pray, God, where are you leading us? And follow the check if you tell us not to go into a store. Our lives could be at stake. There could be viruses. There could be anything there that we're not supposed to come in contact with. But you're leading your people to walk in a higher road, a higher ground, where we're discerning by the Spirit what it is you're speaking in this hour to your people. Father, help us, Lord God to only put the right foot in front of the left foot when you lead us. And when you say, stand still, we stop, we hesitate. Help even the young people today to mind the checks in the spirit that encompasses all that are on this call, all that are in Nigeria, all of the brethren that we know of that have children. Father, we pray God put a discernment in their hearts to know what is safe and what is not safe. And the deception, when we believe something safe and it's not, we're asking for the check of the spirit to be founded in our heart that would hear the Holy Ghost say, stop, don't go any further. And we would obey. God, we just pray for this as our sister Fasola brings us to our attention today. Amen. God, help us to be a sensitive people in the spirit at all times. And we do pray for our children that maybe haven't had the experience or the walk with you to really know genuinely and hear your voice. Father, we're praying, drop it in their hearts at the right moment. Save them from the danger that lurks, the enemy that is just seeking whom he may devour. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to let Sister Sandra, Sandra's nudging me. She has a word from the Lord for us today. So I'm going to give way here and give her place to, to have a seat. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, the scripture tells us to be instant in season. And uh, we had a meeting this morning with our, our brother, um, John Baines and 
the Lord really uh, met us. We're so grateful for brethren. And uh, then we were surprised yesterday evening that the scheduled speaker for today um, was unable to, to come. So um, I've been just looking to the Lord this morning, and I would like to share with you uh, some scripture. And um, I, my husband's given me the liberty. I'm not a teacher. <laughs> However, if the Lord quickens something to me, I'm very grateful for a husband that allows me to bring what God has put on my heart. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would like to do is give uh, a song by, uh, that is a Mother's Day song. And I think it's appropriate that we honor our mothers and, um, and that I'd like to uh, bring some scripture. So here is the song.
Hallelujah. Choose to raise them up for Jesus. I'm going to give a little testimony of my own mom, and then I'd like to read some scriptures to correlate motherhood with who God is to us. Um, I was raised by a mom who came from immigrant parents from Italy. She was the only girl with three brothers and from a very young age she became a very responsible person went to work as soon as she left high school and became a very successful businesswoman everybody loved her everybody that knew her she was kind of a household name throughout the region that i lived in and was raised in but the most significant thing to me was the fact that she gave sacrificially to her family and to her daughters. Um, and her signature was prayer and continually sharing the love of Jesus to everyone, but especially to her children. And I grew up seeing my mom on her knees. Whatever happened, I would go into the bedroom and there would be my mother on her knees praying and really crying out to God for whatever was happening. And she did a lot of praying for me. And her mother, my grandma, was an equally praying, praying woman. And uh, she taught me my first and only Italian prayer uh, when I stayed with her after the passing of my grandfather. But these two women in my life, life, first my grandmother and my mother, I believe were responsible for me coming to the Lord. And one key is that she never saw the wrong that I did. And I did much. She always pushed me in the direction of the Savior and really believed that I would come to know him. And I could give you testimony after testimony, but I know the reason that I am walking today with the Lord is because of my mother. And at the end of her life, David and ha I had the incredible blessing of bringing her into our home and praying for her. She was Catholic, but in the end, all she acknowledged was Jesus. And for that, we are very grateful. And when she passed, we were awoken, David and I, up in the wee hours of the morning to the sound of the most beautiful um, instrumental, vocal instrumental music that was so, um, so unworldly. And we woke up and we were running into her room and she had just taken her last breath. And we heard the angels singing. I have never heard music like that before or since. And when we tried to figure out where did this come from, even calling the radio station to see if by chance it was a music piece being played, they said, no, they've never heard anything like it. And it was the heavenly host, the angelic voices, all in perfect harmony with the most beautiful crescendos very high uh, and very resonant it permeated our whole home it was the angelic host coming for my mother and so I am so grateful for a godly mother and you know that mother could be an adoptive mother it could be a, a, a sister raising her sister's child or her brother's child 
you know, the biology of it, um, as significant as it is, is not primary. The song talked about raise them for Jesus. And that is our only obligation. And if we um, don't have, are not equipped to take care of a, ch of a child and bring them up, we rely on our Lord to equip us with whatever is needed because he knows each child and how to bring forth the giftings that he put within them and to nurture them to be not only responsible adults, but godly adults. And it is a great, great responsibility. And I know that sometimes we can look back at the mistakes that we have made and all we need to do is repent and hold them up before the Lord because I believe the scripture that says, train up a child in the way they should go when they are old doesn't kind of say anything in the middle but when they are old they will not depart and i believe that the seeds that are planted in childhood especially that first five years when so much takes place within a little human body they really become who they are going to be within that first five years mm -hmm. um uh, it will bring forth much fruit. Yeah. Now, Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, when we have read this in the past, as human beings, we want it to only apply to us. And so we read it. Children are the Lord's heritage to us. His reward to us is our children. Haven't we always read it that way? However, I would like to give you a different meaning that I believe um, the Lord showed me. And you know, the scriptures uh, are ever evolving. They have so much depth that I don't believe we always fully comprehend the meaning of scripture until we need it. And then it becomes very personal. It applies directly to our situation and it brings forth fruit. And we never can get tired of the word of God because God's word evolves. It, it changes as our situations change. It becomes life-giving for every moment that we have need of the word. And so let me show you something that I saw this morning. Children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So I'm gonna clarify that. We bring forth children as unto the Lord. They are his gift to us. But when we nurture them and we train them up unto Jesus, we train them up to, to worship and adore and love him, it becomes, the fruit of our womb becomes his reward. We are saying, God, I take this precious child that you have given me and I am going to train them up to love you. And this I'm going to give back to you. It's your reward, Lord. I take no credit. All credit goes to you, Jesus. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child? that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. And this is the shocking thing because I never, in all of the days that I was raising my children at home, would ever believe that a mother could forget her child. But Jesus said, yay, they may forget. Now I got to a point 
when raising my children, different situations that became so painful. Maybe at one point they were wayward or they wounded me. And all mothers that really love their children can get hurt by their children like no other. Neighbors can say things. Even a husband can say something. A sibling, a brethren can say something wounding, but I don't think there's ever a wound as great as a wound that a mother receives at the hands of a child that she brought forth and raised. But the Lord said, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. When we look at our Jesus in the context of being not only father, but the attributes of mother, which he brought into the human race and the female portion of that human race, he loves like a mother loves. He will never forget us. No matter where we go, how far we stray, the things that we do that hurt our Lord, this says he will have compassion on us. He will not forget us. And brethren, as you were walking um, in the world and maybe you were had the blessing of being raised in the Lord and never strayed. But the scripture says, he that loveth much, he that forgiveth much, loveth much. And I know as I look in my own life, I had a lot to be forgiven for. And Jesus in the midst of my degradation and sin, he said, while I was yet a sinner, he loved me and he died for me. And brethren, I'm sure each one of us have looked back on our lives and said, Lord, you loved me even when I strayed, even when I did that or this that was unlovely. You saw it before it even happened. And you said, I forgive you. I love you. I died for you. And you know, that love that mothers have is just an extension of God's love because there is no love like God's love, none. And we as women, as much as we believe that we do absolutely the best for our children and we love them like no father could, like no sibling could, like no auntie could, not like a village could, we feel somehow that we have the ability to love a child irregardless of anything that has taken place with that child. And it almost, there's almost a pride that builds up in moms, like this is my child. But you know, that love, if it doesn't come from God to you, you have no ability to love. And that's why we have heard situations where with women have not done well by their children, done terrible things. And we wonder, how is that possible? They did not have the love of God shed abroad in their hearts because it says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So if there's any goodness in us, <clears throat> any ability to love, to share love, it's because we have tapped in to the maker, to our maker, to the savior. And we have allowed our hearts to be opened to receive his perfect love. And as we receive his perfect love, we can take a measure of that and give it to those that God puts in our charge. And 
That is the reason that women who have not birthed a child can love an adoptive child. That is the reason that how, the reason why a woman who has not birthed a child can love a child in Ethiopia, in Nigeria, in China, can take on the burden that comes from the Lord and minister God's love to that child that not only have they not birthed, have not carried in their body, but have captured the Lord, the, the love of God, and be able to shed that love on another human being that was not born out of their own loins. Hallelujah. Matthew, uh, no, I, I apologize. Isaiah 66, 13. And, you know, brethren, this is, I'm just sharing. I'm not teaching. Um, I, I'm very, um, I don't want anyone to think that I'm teaching because my husband's the teacher, but he's given me the liberty to share. And I just would like to share with you what God was beginning to speak to me. Isaiah 66, 13, Jesus is talking. He's saying, as one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You know, throughout all of history, people throughout the ages have suffered and you wonder, God, how do they, how do they cope with all of the things that they have had to go through? But the Lord in Isaiah 66, 13 says, as one whom his mother comfort, comforteth. So this could be to anyone, even those who were raised without knowing their natural mother raised in orphanages, gone through hardships, never knew the love of a mother, the Lord said, I am as your mother. I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Jerusalem can speak of that which is our area, our surrounding area, our domain, our locale. Well, whether it's a village, a town, a city, a church, a group of people that are part of our lives, that's who Jerusalem is. New Testament says that when we witness, it will be first in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then the uttermost parts. And so the Lord is saying, in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, I will comfort you wherever you are whatever your problems are, whatever the things that trouble you, I, I, the Lord, will comfort you. And then the last is Matthew 23, 37. Hallelujah, isn't God good? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. That uh, sounds to me like a lament. The Lord was lamenting. He was looking over his people. He was looking over Jerusalem and he was saying, I sent you prophets and you killed them. You stoned my people. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. That was the cry of God. He was saying, a hen is female. It's female. And you have destroyed every good thing that I have sent you. 
And this was my provision for you. And yet you left your house desolate. You destroyed. Verse 38, you destroyed. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The marvelous and totally incomprehensible thing about God is that nothing can separate us from his love. Each one of us have can look back on our lives and say, oh Lord, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I didn't make this choice. I wish this never happened. But we know that Jesus is saying, repent. There is nothing that you have done so great that you could separate me from your love. Nothing, nothing. And that is the reason we serve the risen Savior. He is the risen Savior. He died because of love. He died that we would be set free from this sin, that our houses will not be left desolate, that our human bodies and who we are will not be left desolate, that we have a redeemer, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is always available. And he likens himself to a mother that would always come and gather her chicks to protect them from danger. The Lord is always there to gather us up into his arms and say, I forgive you. I love you. Nothing will separate me from, separate you from my love. And so the final statement is a mother's position is very significant. It is the representation of God's love for us. And so as we honor our mothers today, and even those that have gone on before us, I am so thankful to the Lord for a godly mother and a father. But my mom was instrumental in raising me to love Jesus. And I in turn now have that responsibility to minister to my grandchildren and to know that my prayers will be effective, irregardless of what I see, that they will come to know the Lord and my children will all return to Zion. And thank you, brethren, for giving me the opportunity to share on this very important day of Mother's Day. And I'm grateful that we could gather together today to celebrate not only our moms, but our Savior, who is all love, all mercy, all forgiveness. Thank you, brethren. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. You know, the scripture that comes to mind as Sandra was sharing that it says in Proverbs, a wise woman buildeth her house, but a foolish woman plucketh it down with her hands. Amen. And so you can see the application in the natural and the application of a woman in scripture is a church. Amen. So uh, the woman is the glue is the adhesive bonding agent between one brick and another. And so a mother can build a house, build unity, amen. Uh, we knew one minister, he traveled um, the country. So he wasn't home much at all with his wife who was raising their uh, four children at the time. And so the woman, this is the wife now, when they sat down to pray at their meal, uh, she would thank the Lord that 
she had a husband that was doing God's will. And she encouraged the children that you have a very special father that is out there ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. She built him up. She built up her husband in the eyes of her children. And to this day, all those children are serving the Lord today. Amen. So a wise woman, again, buildeth her house. But a foolish woman can tear it down with her hands, you know. And so we see the difference here. And you can think of a church, too. Uh, a church that is always on the negative, always criticizing, always accusing what other churches are doing out there wrong, but never really building them up with the positive. They can also tear the work of God down. Uh, so we always want to be fortified in building up in the spirit. Praise God. Uh, we had traveled and we were just coming uh, thoughts here in recent days of our travels uh, to Iceland, to um, Europe, Eastern Europe. And we had an opportunity to get into Poland uh, many, many years ago. And uh, this was when the communist regime was still in power. And in Poland, they are very strong Catholicism. It's very powerful. And, you know, Catholicism runs throughout the world, and there seems to be different varieties of Catholicism, but they all have a bonding agent. You know, they all come together as Catholics. You know, you can have the Irish Catholics, you can have, you know, the Polish Catholic, the American. Everyone has a different style or a different breed, but it bonds together. But I remember when we went to Poland, uh, it was Brother Mike Pellin and myself, two brothers, and we we're in Poland and we needed a translator. So the taxi cab driver that picked us up at the airport and drove us to our hotel said, oh, you need a translator. I will be back at nine in the morning with my taxi and someone that can help you translate. And so he came back at nine in the morning and he had this woman with her, a, a young gal, and she could speak fluent English and Polish, of course. And uh, she was just excellent translator, amen. But she ended up traveling with, with us, you know, during the daylight hours, you know, for a few days with us. And she saw how the Lord was really working with us. And her observation was, this is amazing. This is a country that worships Mary. The Mary worship is very strong in Poland, the mother of Jesus, you know, and is promoted so high, it's higher than even Jesus. Mary is promoted as Virgin Mary and promoted as the mother of God, you know. And so it was very, very powerful there. And her conclusion after a few days of just traveling with us, conversing with others that we made contact with in the country, she said, here in Poland, we serve a dead God, but we see, I see, you serve a living God, amen. That was the impact she had. So she saw that the worship of Mary was really the worship of a dead God. It wasn't, amen, as God intended. But she said, you serve a living God. And that's the key to us all, amen. We serve a living God. And he should be a part of our lives, actively working each and every day. Amen. Praise God. So, Brother Joe, are you back with us now? We had a bad connection earlier. Are you still? Are you can you try to come on? Can we pick you up? <coughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, brother. Amen. Great. Yes. Um, we can hear you pretty well now. That's good. Yes. Okay. I just thank the Lord for, you know, the insight. This is the Sandra gave. Amen. And uh, while, I, while, while she was sharing too, I was trying to compare it with the church. Yes. You know, because yeah. the, like you said, the woman is the church. Yes. And um, what should the church be doing now? Amen. What are we supposed to be doing now? Yeah. We are supposed to be doing what Paul said. Mm -hmm. He says, I expose you as chaste virgins <clears throat> to the Lord. Yes. So just like you said, the church now, the ministry, well, not Mr. Everyone should endeavor 
to study the word. Yes. And be able to bring the word, undiluted word for the day. Because the word of God should be for the day. Amen. This, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Yes. Yes. Not still bread. So we Amen. need to be in tune. Really, as often as we meet, bring the bread for the day that is able to transform us from our carnal realm to the to the height of the realm which the Lord expects us. Amen. In essence, the word of God should be should be transforming us. Yes. From glory to glory. So that's what the church should be doing now. Amen. The church should be praying, just like Sister Sandra said, the mother was praying. Yes. We yes. should take time to pray in the word of God, the fulfillment Amen. of the word of God in our lives. We we'll take time, every one of us, every disabilities we have, every besetting sin, whatever it is that is wrong, Amen. we take time to pray about it. Yes. And as we go to the Lord in study, the Lord will bring words to that will help us. Amen. That will convict the hearts of, of brethren. Praise and God. Turn us to the Lord. So it's a good word. It's Amen. a good word. I'm impressed and I mean, I'm happy about it. And yes. I wish the church will, will use it as a stepping stone, you know, what, what she just shared. Yes. The church really look into it and walk in that direction, just like some mothers will continue to pray for the well being of their children. Yes. Pray for the success. Some of them even pray their children to become born again. Amen. The church itself will take time out to do this. And the reward, like she said, will be to the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, Brother Joe. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, good word today from Sister Sandra. Truly, as we begin to behold the natural mother, amen, but also what women are depicted in Scripture as a church, amen, and a good church. Praise God. Excellent. Amen. Well, Brother Bob, I mean, you have done a marvelous job raising your children, and uh, most of them are married, and some even have uh, children of their own, so that makes you grandparents. Uh, we're going to ask you for a word of advice, amen, that God has birthed within you over the years of raising your children in the Lord, amen. Oh, goodness, brother. <laughs> Brother, I'm, well, I, I'm, I'm married. I, you know, my I, I have a first-rate wife and mother, and she is a mother to her children. Amen. I don't know how how good of a dad and husband I've been. Um, we, uh, I, I, I guess there was a spoken or unspoken kind of a fear of sex that, that was instilled in the children. They, they, they've escaped it. I, I know I'm pleased about that. Um, <laughs> Amen. I, I, um, but I, I don't know what specifically much I, I did in that regard. Uh, they, um, the boys were active in their, in the, uh, track and cross country which is my background also yeah uh, I, I i like that as as an athletic uh, pursuit Amen. oh what else um it's hard to <clears throat> just what to add um yeah Did I, you I, I didn't always i don't always feel like we in in church like we had great respect from the brethren about our child raising in fact we had one fellowship in the past that it just that was it kind of fell apart over child raising hmm. um yes yeah. that was my opinion but uh mm -hmm. <clears throat> amen did you pray with your children i uh daily basis did you uh, have bible studies with them what did you do because the brethren don't know your background with the children uh many of them are 
really walking in with the Lord, successful good marriages in the Lord. Amen. I think of your daughter Christy marrying David Whitbolt. Uh, David is a son of an elder in the Muhammad Fellowship for many years, and they have beautiful children. Amen. And we could go down the line, but Brother Bob, what, what did you do? Did you read the scriptures with them? Did you pray with them? How did you raise them? Well, we we did read uh, on a nightly basis pretty regularly, you know, whether it's in like this cartoon uh, uh, Bible, children's Bible, it's called. Uh -huh. We really yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> some prayers, I don't know that I always prayed with them uh, and as they've approach marriage i i've just uh had i was uh i was trying to get them equally yoked yes okay they didn't the kids and and everybody knows that your kids don't necessarily always make the choices you would make that's right <laughs> and, God would you know, you know <laughs> fully fully uh like be in the fellowship and such but that's we we i think we've accomplished that with the first four yeah. they've been pretty much equally yoked yeah. and, and we're, you know we're working with that amen um <clears throat> oh boy amen. i'm just <laughs> i'm you david you put me on the spot here i'm not, not generally you. asked about how yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Brother Bob, let me let me share with you. My mother was Miss Personality. She was accomplished in business. Everybody loved her. She would walk into a room and it would light the room up. <clears throat> My dad was the polar opposite. My dad was very quiet. He was a homebody. He was a hard worker. He had to retire um, early because he had health issues because he did heavy manual labor. He was a, mm -hmm. he was a mason a bricklayer. <clears throat> My dad was a quiet man, but he was an honorable man. I, I don't know why it's important, but the thing that I remembered about my father is my father always had a shirt on. Now, when I say a shirt, I don't mean something fancy. It could be an undershirt, any kind of a shirt. Um, the only time I ever saw my father was without a shirt was when he was in his garden in the hot, hot beating sun watering his garden. But as soon as he stepped into the home, he covered himself. My father would never sit at the kitchen table, have dinner without a shirt on. <clears throat> I never saw my father undressed. He was a man of dignity and quiet and hardworking and faithful. When mom worked, he would cook dinner. He always felt it was important to have our home our cupboards full of food. He went, his greatest joy was grocery shopping and stocking our basement reserve with food, with, with the things he felt were necessary to take care of our family. Now, anybody that would know him, <clears throat> mom was the popular one. My dad was in the background, but when I came to the Lord, the thing that spoke to me was that he was a man of dignity. And when he died, <clears throat> he died a very hard death. He had lung cancer and it went to his brain. And I, we took care of him at home, but he would never let me bathe him nor change him. And I was a nurse. And when he passed and I turned him over, I was devastated because he had his skin had broken down and he had a what is called a decubitus on the base of his spine. And he must have been in terrible pain. But he was such a man of dignity that he would not even let 
me take care of his body. And when they gave him the diagnosis of cancer, I had a friend in the hospital that, that went in and <clears throat> because I asked her to, and he said to her, don't tell my girls my diagnosis. His whole concern was to protect us <clears throat> and take care of us. And you know, my mom may have been the flamboyant one, but my dad had strength and reserve and faithfulness. And Bob, I see you that way. You are an honorable man and you have been there over the years for your family. You have worked hard day in and day out in the midst of all kinds of bad weather to get up, even when you didn't feel like it, to get dressed and to go to work and put in a long day at work. And every night when your children came home from school, you were there. Mm -hmm. You were not an absent father. You were a very visible father. And I just want to encourage you that faithfulness mm -hmm. is very important to the Lord. It's not what you say. It's not your how gifted you are or aren't. What is important to God is that you were a faithful husband and father. Amen. So don't let the enemy beat you up and tell you you didn't really do much and you don't really you didn't really put much forth. That is not the truth because you have children mm -hmm. that have come forth that love Jesus and are good parents. Amen out of your example, mm -hmm. you were faithful. They never had to worry when they came home, will my dad be there or not? They knew, they knew you were there and they knew you were bringing that paycheck home every week. And they knew it was because you were working hard. You got every, up every morning, whether you felt like it or not, and you put in a day's work, month after month, year after year because you loved your family. If Jesus was here right now, he would say to you, Bob, well done. Bob. Well done. Amen. Amen, brother. Yeah, praise God. You've been not only faithful to your household, but you've been faithful to the household of God. Not to say that all the brethren uh, over time have been faithful. Many have tailed away. Some have gone back into the world. Some have deserted the Lord, but you've been found faithful to the house of God. So what Sandra shared not only applies to your natural family, but also to the household of God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask Brother Joe Ansa, do you remember there was a time when Bob traveled to Port Harcourt, Nigeria? Do you remember Bob from there? Amen. Uh, I can't really remember. Okay. Amen. Well, talk to... Uh, 2006. 2006. Amen. Yeah. 2006. 2006. You know, ask, talk to Chima Onion. He remembers Bob quite well coming in 2006. So, so he's done some travel with some of the brethren too. So he came as far as Port Harcourt, Nigeria to visit you. Amen. And I know many in America wouldn't even venture on a plane uh, to come your way. Amen. So there's something of courage, valor, amen, and commitment to the Lord. And our brother's been faithful to the house of God. So we thank <clears throat> the Lord for Brother Bob. And if you saw his children, if you ever saw a picture of his whole family, amen, he would say that's a picture perfect family right there. Amen. Great. Amen. amen. Well, even though. <laughs> Even though we're having our issues with our <laughs> two youngest right now, one is in the world. I might mention that the World Mission Society Church of God. Yeah. Keep aware of that. Uh, this this thing is really spreading over many countries. Uh, our our fifth child, Matthew, is involved in it. Yes. Um, yes. 
and um, you can you can read about it on the internet. Amen. It's, it's got some errors in it, but but yeah. we're talking with him. We're we're learning how to yeah. how to be a dad and mother in, in the midst of this kind of a situation. He's 28 now. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we will pray here at the end of close here as we close Matthew. pretty soon, but we'll pray for Matthew. Uh, we've known deceptions that are out there in the church world, and this is one of them that Bob is mentioning. So we're going to pray all of us together for <clears> your <throat> fifth son, Matthew, and then your sixth son, Wesley, will also include him in prayer. I know those two are heavy on your heart, you and Carol, and we'll continue to pray for them. Amen. Praise God. But uh, Sister Shari, amen. We want to bring you in, on in this wonderful oh, day. Oh, she's not well. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. There she is. Yes. Aww. Great. Are you in need of prayer, dear? How are you feeling today? Oh, that'd be wonderful. I've. Oh. It's not a big deal. I'm not. I'm not terribly sick, but I'm not a hundred percent either. So just, I just have throat. <clears throat> Amen. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll pray. Yeah, we can begin to pray. <clears throat> Father, Go we ahead. come before you for Shari. Lord, yes. the enemy is threatened by her evangelism, yeah. her diligence to speak the word of the Lord Amen. to whomever she comes in contact with. She uses every occasion <clears throat> as an opportunity to share Jesus. Yeah. And the enemy is angry with Shari and has attacked her throat. Amen. Mm -hmm. Plus, she is diligent to expend her energies and her strength. And sometimes that means she doesn't really take well enough care of herself. So, Father, I'm asking that you would give her rest. Mm -hmm. And we do rebuke this sore throat, yes. this thing, bacteria, that has hit her throat, even to mimic strep throat. We bind it. Yes. We curse that thing at its root. We speak health mm -hmm. and healing and mm -hmm. life yes. and strength that no weapon <clears throat> will uh, affect our, uh, your daughter, Jesus, no yeah. weapon formed, that your blood will touch her and make her every whit whole. Amen. And whatever she is taking will work towards her good and nothing negative, no negative results from it. We pray for her lungs. Mm -hmm. that it would not go into pneumonia. Mm -hmm. We pray for her immune system, that her immune system would be strengthened. Yes. And we pray, God, that she would get much needed rest. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of this time, that you would quiet her, mm -hmm. give her rest that Mm -hmm. begin to refresh her lord yes. speak to her of those deep things that you are desiring to commune to her Amen. because we know that she is about her father's business from morning till night <clears throat> she's like this beautiful little butterfly that just flits from flower to flower bringing the good news of jesus and the love of god and I'm praying, God, that you just cause her to settle during this time, that she would not <clears throat> cut short mm -hmm. this period of rest that you desire to give her, mm -hmm. that she would be nurtured under your mighty, loving arms, and she would come forth mm -hmm. stronger and healthier than before. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we lift up our brother Bob to you today. Father, he, he's done well. He's been raising six children, but his two youngest, as is often the case, uh, carrying more of a burden, a concern. And so we just shoulder it with our brother today. Father, we pray for Matthew that's involved as some of our children have gone wayward or found another um, form 
that looks godly, but it denies the power thereof, some form of religiosity. Father, we pray, God, for Matthew. In the name of Jesus Christ, you deliver him from deception. He knows the scriptures, but Lord, it's taught by a different spirit. And we come against that spirit in the name of Jesus that is denying the truth behind the word itself. Father, we pray, God, deliver Matthew from following this fast-growing denomination, false religion, could call it a sect, call it even a cultist. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, deliver Matthew and deliver those that are involved in that major deception to find the truth in the living God, we pray. Father, we pray for his youngest son, Wesley. Amen. The last one usually carries so much of the parent's burden. We are praying for Wesley that he would find his pathway in Christ. He has older brothers and sisters. He has parents that have modeled you, but Lord, he needs to find you for himself. Amen. Lord, we can't go to heaven for someone else. We can't pray for someone else. We can't bring someone to salvation by ourselves. Father, it takes your unction, your spirit, and your movement. Father, we pray for Wesley, that in, a, in his heart's drive, he would search after you, seek after you, and pray, are you the truth? And Lord, I know if he would come before you and even challenge you, you will meet his challenge. You will meet him <clears throat> as a true and living God, we pray, that Father, you would come and commune with Wesley, and mm -hmm. Wesley would know that he knows that this God that he's heard of all these years no longer is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but it's his God also. Amen. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, strike a chord in Wesley's heart. Deliver him from the pull that is so strong of the world upon all of our children, our grandchildren. The pull of this world is so great that unless we have a relationship with you, we cannot overpower this thing in our own strength. We need help. We need you to break the tethering pull of this world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Glory to God. Amen. Brother, and the prophetic is here. Oh, Prayers are yeah. here. Let's let it flow. Praise God. Brother Terry. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for our heritage yes. in you, Lord. We thank you for our families, Lord. And our hearts cry is that they would be in the ark Amen. of God in the times to come. And we thank you for the place of <clears throat> preparation that we've all been in for many years, even in the wilderness, God. Mm -hmm. And we're just crying out to you that you would bring uh, our all of our households into the ark of safety lord during this time and i'm reminded of <clears throat> the flood <clears throat> and how they all heard the preaching of noah mm -hmm. and they they had time in the water yeah drownings are slow to process and they had time in the water to repent Amen. and lord we're <clears throat> asking you lord to speak to our children through the world events and that <clears throat> they would hearken to the words ministered to the examples ministered to them Amen. that they might be <clears throat> where you want them to be hallelujah in the name of jesus thank yes. you god Amen. wanted to add shortly to sandra's word yes. uh, a little bit just to, Amen. to honor debbie's mom yeah. kathy yeah. tilson <clears throat> and uh Amen. you know she was probably the goodest the greatest grandmother I ever knew. And she reached out to my family. Uh, she took me in. Yeah. And my mom died when I was 19 or 18 or 19. But I was, I ended up, she died from cancer three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, all the family members, all the ch children wrote a little something about her. And they were all kind of broken up. And uh, they asked me to share the things at the memorial service yeah. that they had written. Mm -hmm. And an anointing came upon me and I read boldly the statements from everyone. Yes. And I added my own too, of course. And it's really interesting 
at the summary of someone's life mm -hmm. that, that they have a legacy. Yeah. And I think all of our moms have a legacy, you know. And what was amazing about <clears throat> Grandma Kathy, you know, was how she was there for all my children. And, you know, we moved to Colorado 24 years ago, so 20 years ago. So we, we weren't close to, to her. Well, she mm -hmm. flew out <clears throat> at least twice a year. So we figured out that she probably flew out to Colorado 50 times, you know, or so and, and visited. And she would often give us a week, weekend off or something and watch the kids for the week and uh, anniversaries and stuff. And my, my uh, standing joke with mom was that I would, she became my mom. Uh, my standing joke with her was I would say, okay, mom, have you taken your vitamins? Like, you know, cause she had the work <laughs> cut out for her. Yeah. And you know, she, she was a very good woman. She wrote letters to everyone, friends, family, you know, every Christmas letter, every Thanksgiving letter, everything. Yeah. And you, you name it, she did it. And to so many people and very honored in her memorial service by the community she grew up in as a teacher. <clears throat> so I think there is a real legacy for living as a mom. And yeah. uh, she was in the Methodist church and she, off, she always went to church with us wherever we were. It was pretty wild sometimes. And I really believe in her, especially her latter years, that she really understood and honored the personal relationship with the Lord, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to share that testimony. It was so amazing when you reckon, realized, wow, she flew out 50 times, you yes. know, over the years to visit us. And that was really amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what I had to share. Yes. Amen. Well, I remember that was very well. I remember. Prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, 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 you know, it's really hard to discern, like we're saying, you know, what, Obviously, we want to be in God or whatever, but um, there is that measure that just um, just believing in people, just being kind, just um, encouraging their lives, you know, has meant meant to so much to so many people. And, and my mom, you know, did try to please people, you know, and make everybody happy. And, and there probably are issues with that. And my brother would confront her on it. But the truth is, when it when it comes down to that final hour, yeah. you know, to hear so many students and people in the community, and of course, all the grandchildren, that was, uh, would have been nine of them, no, uh, seven of them, you know, that really the testimony of someone who reached out to them and believed in them and, you know, had personal conversations, you know, really meant a lot and, and always lived, you know, obviously a, a kind and, and righteous life. But um, so it is hard. And then, you know, obviously in the body of Christ, we're, we were really being challenged today, you know, just the outpouring of love that God has for all of us and that that outpouring is coming out of us. And yeah. so how much more powerful as we, pour out the love of Christ and salvation and the goodness of God, you know, who can forget Janet Yancey and her belief in how good everyone around her was and how children's prayers were totally answered by God, you know, and, and I think we all need to enter into that same, that same place, you know, in, in whoever we are, because obviously we all are different, but um, that as we proclaim, um, as we appreciate people, um, the, they see God, you know, um, cause we're looking for just as we're to appreciate God, you know, uh, we should be, you know, whenever we begin our prayers, it's so great to adore him, you know, um, but really appreciating those around us. And, and it's not always easy to find that, you know, maybe in some situations, but I think if we're, as we continue in this late hour to just say, God, I really want to be your, your messenger where he's going to give us the right thing to say at the right moment for a certain person, you know, of appreciating them, you know, and building them up, um, to, to start seeing that there is a God that loves them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. I remember her very well, Deb, your mom. Praise God. Yeah. You knew her. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Never, never complained no. <laughs> through through cancer, yeah. never 
a complaint never to the end hallelujah praise god you know certain attributes are born there of the lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, they might come naturally so they seem to be to the people that own them but they're really supernatural gifts from god amen mm -hmm. and debbie had debbie your mom had several of those praise god mm -hmm. i remember her well Amen. And it passes on to Debbie and then it's passing on to our daughters. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. And, and Terry has his hands full. He's raising five daughters. Amen. So <laughs> that would be a handful for any man. Praise God. <laughs> right here. Well, did you know today's a momentous day? Oh. Because our last daughter graduated from college yesterday. And Praise it didn't strike me too much yesterday. But I did wake up this morning going, yeah, this is sort of the end. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And you've done. But it's not well. really the end, of course, because we were to be in their lives and pray with them. And of course, we have granddaughters. So we get a, bit, we get a second chance at a better perspective, much better perspective. <laughs> Amen. But, yeah. And the youngest daughter, she's getting married. We understand in mm -hmm. August, and we've had mm -hmm. to meet her prospective husband, and uh, I'm sure he meets with highest approval from both of you, as he certainly yep. has impressed me as a man of God. So praise God, you've done well. Amen. <laughs> yes, as Bob Amen. was sharing, we just pray that God they be equally yoked. That's the greatest prayer we can pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. If we've Amen. been in that situation before with our own daughter. You know, they meet someone and you know it's not the Lord. And so you have to really get your prayer boots on. Amen. And pray to the moon if you have to. <laughs> yep. Let him find whatever he needs to find on the moon, but not here. <laughs> but, now. but now. Amen. But now, yes. So we have a, we have a, a wonderful son-in-law and we're thankful for him. Praise him. Yeah. Amen. Great. Amen. Well, excellent. Well, we want to pray today also for Sister Kaya here. Amen. Uh, she <laughs> lost her mother years ago, but she's hoping to go to back to Slovakia this summer. She was praying. She called me and said, we have a, I have a word from the Lord to go. Amen. And so we're believing she's going to be able to board that plane and go all the way to Vienna and then Across the border from Austria into Slovakia and visit her father, who's quite elderly now. Amen. But uh, he does have a grandson that Kyle will be bringing with. Amen. In the form of Judah. Uh, but we want to pray for her even now. Uh, she has booked her ticket. Amen. And they've stated no requirements on the airlines thus far. But we're believing she's going to get there and back without taking the vaccine. Amen. Uh, that's a biggie. It's going to get to be really tough. International travel is very difficult, already is, without taking the vaccine. And so she does not want to take the vaccine. And so she believes that's an order from the Lord. And with the Lord saying, go, he must have a way for her to go without taking that. And the airlines has not put any requirement on her thus far. So brother, let's pray for Kaya and this trip upcoming uh, I think it's next month, correct? Yes, uh, June 30th. June 30th. Amen. Praise God. And she has a nonstop flight. Praise God. Nonstop. From Chicago straight into Vienna. So right. we just want to join with her in prayer and believe she'll have safe passage into Slovakia. And at the end of summer, when she comes back to the States, uh, she'll be escorted safely in under the wire. Praise God. And return home that Judah can start school the next few days once they're back. Amen. So Father, we pray for Sister Kaya right now. Lord, we all lift up our sister before you. Lord, she has a father she has not seen in a few years. He lives in Slovakia. He cannot get here. But Lord, she has found grace with you on airlines that would take her all the way in, right into Vienna. And we're praying, God, that you would be aboard that plane. There be no requirements placed upon Kaya that you do not allow. In the name of Jesus, that, Lord, she would go there safely, 
God, disease-free, germ-free, bacteria-free, virus-free. In the name of Jesus, we speak the word of life over her and Judah, that, Lord, they would be there. And we send them forth as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ back to Slovakia. Father, she has many friends, family that still do not know you. And we're praying that, Lord, you would grant her the entrance of thy word that giveth light. Lord God, let it be a part of Kaya and let it be imparted to those that she come in contact with. Lord, we don't know when any of us will ever be able to travel again country to country. But Lord, you're giving our sister an opportunity right now before things really close down, get very difficult. We pray, God, that you'd anoint her, quicken her, Lord God. There are those that need to hear the word of the gospel of the kingdom at this time. Amen. And anoint our sister as never before because we do not know when the next chance would be. This, for some, could be their last chance. Kaya has many relations. In their older sunset years, we're praying, God, they would hear the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you'd save them from the pit of hell Start is, sharing my ETA with you in Apple Maps, amen. arriving at Boulder Public Library around. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That the enemy would not be allowed. Amen. Entrance and break up that which you are doing in this sister's life and in the people that she meets around her. In Jesus' name. And we pray a special prayer for Kaya's father, that Lord, he would come to know Jesus. Lord, he's praying with Kaya on the phone. He's acknowledging you. But Lord, amen, it's not enough to believe. He needs to receive. Amen. Let him receive the grace of God into his life. And I pray when Kaya goes this time, they'll have a special moment, a special time where he would open his heart to Jesus Christ. He would repent as all of us need to. For we're all born in sin. But Lord, there's deliverance from the Lord Jesus Christ, and he would see Jesus, not just as a good person, but as the son of the living God that gave his life for him, that he might have eternal life. In the name of yes. Jesus, we pray. Praise yes. God. Amen. Yes, brethren, yes. can I share? Thank you, Brother David, for that prayer. Yeah. I just want to say, little prayer for someone special in Czech Republic. We just received the news about Hedvika and her husband, Ivan, who just passed. He slipped into eternity. And I would like to lift up Hedvika. And she wrote me that she knows that God knew why he allowed this. So mm. that's her statement. And Father God, we lift up our sister. Lord, I know how it feels firsthand to lose a loved one. Lord, we love our husbands. We cherish them. We, we are just, Lord, it must be so hard for Hedwika. So I pray that you would, he, you would be her stay. You would be her shield. You would be her help that she would turn to you in her sorrow, Lord, and just encourage her through her children, through her grandchildren, Lord. She's not alone, as I'm not alone, Lord. I have Judah, Lord, but especially on this Mother's Day, Lord, I'm having a hard time, Lord, today. I don't know why, but some sort of sadness came to my life today. But I want to rejoice in you. You are my father and you are Hedviga's father. Lord, we bless this precious woman, this sister. And we know, Father God, that you are going to bring her through victoriously. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, we knew Ivan was struggling. We've been praying with you, Kaya, and for him in particular. Uh, just a little background, brethren, some history here, a man's life here. Ivan and Hedvika, we went to the Czech Republic when it was still Czechoslovakia. Uh, the wall had just come down, and we were having meetings in our little, uh, just a two-bedroom apartment furnished in in downtown Prague. 
in the, well, not quite downtown, it's actually outskirts of Prague, but we'd have meetings there, gospel meetings. And Ivan and Hedvika were solid members of the Baptist church, the biggest Baptist church in all of Czechoslovakia, amen. They were part of that system. And Hedvika's whole family sat on the board of directors of this church. I mean, you're thinking it would take dynamite to get them out of there, that's for sure. So they started to come to the meetings and they started to be blessed. And one day, the brother that just passed now, he had a vision. Listen to his vision. He had the vision and it hit him so strong that he couldn't share it at the meeting. He thought about it for a week, came back the next week and said, I need to share the vision that the Lord gave me. Now listen closely to the vision he had. He said, I saw a number of people at the base of a mountain, milling around at the base of this mountain. And then some began to climb this mountain. And he said, as people began to climb this mountain, fewer and fewer came closer and closer to the top. And then he could look up at the top of the mountain and he could see those with mountain climbing gear, amen. Every foothold and every hand grip had to be precision, precise. And everyone was making it up, but only a few were coming to the top. And then he said, I saw one reach the top of the mountain, amen. And you think that's as high as you can go. But he said, I saw this extended hand go out into the clouds and grabbed the clouds and reached and pulled himself up over the mountain. <laughs> I mean, what a message of faith and a walk with Jesus that we're talking about, walking higher and higher, closer and closer with the Lord. And he had that vision and it never left him. I don't know how, but I believe somehow he walked in that dimension. He acquired whatever God had given them that vision for. But now remember, he has a wife and her whole family is part of that church. They're locked in to the Baptist church. And she's thinking, why did my husband have a vision when we're meeting here in a regular house meeting, but never had a vision the whole time we're in the Baptist church? And she said, I've never had a vision. Lord, you're going to have to speak to me. So one day, Hedvika, who we're praying for, Sister Kaya, now, who's just lost her husband, Hedvika came into the Baptist church, and she had her first vision in the Baptist church. And she saw pillars that were standing there. And she saw at the moment when they opened up the Baptist actual service, they opened up for five minutes where people could pray from the congregation. And she saw as one person prayed, they became living. Amen. And they were alive as one of those pillars. But then when they stopped praying, they became stone again. And then another one would pray. And they became that living stone. And then they went back to being a pillar. And she said, Lord, I know what I'm seeing, but I don't understand. And the Lord said, I have called my people to be living stones seen and read among all men. And so when you saw them respond and they begin to pray from their heart, they became those living stones. But then they went back to being regular stone. Amen. And she said, why are they so far apart, these pillars? And the Lord said, I've not called my people to be standing apart. I've called them to be close together. Amen. And her received that vision and her husband, they came out of the Baptist church unto a higher dimension. And that's to Ivan's credit this day. Amen. He stood against the denominational systems of the time. He prayed, God led them out, and Ivan never went back. Amen. That's to his reward today, Kaya. Amen. So Ivan did fight against the forces of even religiosity and came up to higher ground, to even give us that vision today of those that would climb higher and higher in the Lord. Amen. So just a little background of this man, Ivan, who passed away, gone to glory, no question about it, but leaves behind Hedvika, uh, his wife, 
and I think they had two children. Two. 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 Two, yes. two. two sons, I think. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. We remember them well. Praise God. Amen. And we're thankful he has gone on to glory in a higher dimension than he ever could have attained because he stood against the tide of religiosity and said, no, I am coming out and moving on with God. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. Ivan and Hedvika. Ivan and Hedvika. We will remember Hedvika in our prayers this coming yeah. week and weeks to follow. Amen. That yeah. God would position her strong. Amen. Bye. God. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent meeting today. Anyone else? Prayer requests. Anything else to share? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Excellent. Well, Brother Terry, are you still with us? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Well, maybe you could pray a prophetic prayer. Amen. And close us today. Amen. Okay. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for every word which proceeds out of your mouth. Amen. We can live by no other. Yes. And Lord, we just pray that you would help all of us to be led by your spirit to only do what we see the Father doing. Amen. We pray for your anointing. We pray for your strength, Lord God, to walk in obedience, Lord. Yes. And in the midst of the battles, Lord God, that we know that you have the victory. Amen. A hundred percent, Lord God. And just give us of your dunamis power. Amen. To run after you with all of our hearts, all of our minds all of our will all of our strength lord god amen and we just thank you for the privilege of the family of christ the fellowship lord god amen we thank you for the glory you're calling us to and lord we may not feel like we deserve it lord but we can't see ourselves like you see us lord yes but we pray you would open our eyes to see the glory that you're called to that we might run after you and we give you all the praise and all the glory and honor and thanksgiving in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 praise god excellent amen yes brother joe one final word here from port harcourt amen it's nightfall there okay I think we lost Brother Joe. Amen. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Brethren, God bless you. We look forward to our next gathering Wednesday night. Sister Fasola, bless you today. Amen. Have a very great day. Amen. And we'll continue to pray one for another. Amen. Praise God. Bless you now. Okay. Oh, there you are, Brother Joe. Praise God. Amen. We lost you again. <laughs> okay. Amen. Excellent. Well, Blessing. bless you. Good night now. Have a wonderful Good night. rest of the day. Amen. God bless you. Bless you now. Bye. 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 Bye now. Praise God.